Hello and welcome to the A-List. My name is Colin Hughes. Today I have with me Melissa Foreman from You and Me This Morning on the U. Welcome. Well, thanks, Colin. Good to see you. Yeah. Thanks so, for having me, by the way, on the A-List. Oh, I yeah. feel very, very flattered. Oh, yeah. That, you know? Yeah, no problem. We're happy to have you. All right, let's kick it off with uh, your college uh, years. You started uh, mm -hmm. at the University of Illinois in uh, Champaign. I did. So. I, I started at the University of Illinois, and I majored in broadcast journalism. Um, I actually originally wanted to be a theater major, but my parents said, you know, maybe I should find something <laughs> that I could fall back on, so I wound up going into journalism. So that's where I started. Did you stick with journalism, or did you ever... I did. I wound up um, finishing and getting my bachelor's in journalism, and I didn't really know exactly what I wanted to do. You know, I thought uh, something in you know this field. I knew that I could not be a television reporter. The, the irony is that now I technically am a television reporter, but I always felt like I couldn't sit on a news desk because I'm kind of goofy and funny. And if something you know hysterical happened, I'd be the one that would be under the desk, laughing uncontrollably. Uh, and so then I wound up going into radio and doing a radio morning show. Because while I was at school, I used to wake up in the morning, I would listen to the show John and Maura. And they were incredibly funny and just bright. And at 10 a.m., they would be saying goodbye. And I was thinking to myself, you know, I want a job where at 10 a.m., I'm saying goodbye and I go off with the rest of my day. I had no idea that they have to show prep and do <laughs> other things and that the job doesn't end there. But um, that was the first time that I really heard something. I thought to myself, that's what I want to do for a living. So that's kind of how it got, you know, how it all got started. Very cool. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and then in 1999, you moved to uh, Kiss FM. Yes. Well, in between, so I went from Champaign. I was at Champaign. Mm -hmm. um, I had listened to that show, and then I wound up becoming an intern for them. And The Simpsons had come out. Um, and while I was an intern, this is why you always have to be careful because you never know where you're going to be and the right, you know, the right place at the right time will change your life forever. But mm -hmm. at that time, they were doing a commercial and they needed somebody to do Bart Simpson. And so they were kind of looking around and I was this shy, quiet intern in the corner. And um, I started to do, do an impression of my Aunt Lindy. And I started to say like this, and this is how my Aunt Lindy talked. And they're like, yeah, yeah, kind of. And the next thing I know, I was like, oh, sure, man. There's nothing like a Homer burger to make you wish you were dead. And it came out, and the next thing I know, I, I wound up you know, doing radio, and I stayed there for five more years. Then I went to Cincinnati, uh, and then I came back home to Chicago, and I was at KISS FM Very in 1999. Cool. Yeah. Uh, what, was, what did you do at KISS? So at KISS, I did mornings. I actually did mornings with a guy named George McFly, who, is he famous here? He should be yeah, famous here, right, because uh, he's from? from yeah. Right. So George and I, actually, it was funny, because before I started working with George, um, we had a day where we kind of hung out in, uh, in Brookfield and Riverside, and we came here to the high school and I, you know, just checked it out so we could get to know each other. But I was with him for probably two years or so at Kiss right. FM. Then he left, and I stayed for a bit and then went to Light FM. What did you uh, do at Kiss? Was it talk or music? Or? It was, we did music, not as much as probably our program director wanted us to do, but we did music, goofy stuff. Hollywood news, bits, you know, m most of the same stuff that I've done, you know, pretty much throughout my career. But George is a funny guy, so it, it got crazy. I guess yeah. <laughs> it got a little crazy. <laughs> yeah. So what, then when you uh, moved on to the light, uh, how was that? Did, how did that transition go? It was a little odd at first when they had originally called me. The light was kind of, especially at that time when I went, it was very sleepy. It was slower. And they tried to get me over there several times. And I said to the program director, I said, I can't, I can't go there. I was just a KISS FM, which turned into Energy 92.7 and 5. So it was really upbeat. And they assured me that they were going to be redoing the station and it was going to you know, be more upbeat, different music. And so after maybe eight or so meetings and me kicking my feet, I went there and wound up like absolutely loving it. And they did change the music, which is nice. Yeah. You know, because, it, it, you know, you pay Daft Punk and then you're going to, you know, whatever it is, it's a big difference. Right. So. so when you were at The Light, what was your show like then? So then we went to The Light. Um, it was myself um, and three guys. So I had two producers and then a news guy. And same thing, it was fun. We interviewed celebrities. We did crazy bits and stunts, you know, things, have changed over the years. There are a few, you know, shows here in town that are still able to do that. But back then we did, I mean, all kinds of crazy things. You do f phone calls and um, just, there was a lot of wackiness and goofiness and fun stuff. We did play music a little bit more than we did at KISS FM, but still we had an opportunity to have a show and entertain people. 
Very cool. Mm -hmm. So, uh, unfortunately, you were let go from the light, uh -huh. and you were replaced by Whoopi Goldberg, <laughs> the third most recognizable person in the world. <laughs> so I said, if if you have to be, you know, replaced, that's a good person to be replaced yeah. by. But yeah, you know, it was an opportunity where you know this was a time where they were saving, they were trying to save money nationally, and things were going to a more syndicated base because it's just a way to save money. So I knew that the Whoopi Goldberg was coming, and that we were gonna you know, probably be leaving. I had just had a baby, so I looked at it as a great opportunity to really just be with my child. But it was funny, because my boss at the time, uh, when he let us go, you know, he was really confident this Whoopi Goldberg thing was gonna work, and I was gonna, like, choke him to death. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to jump across the table and, you know, but instead, um, you know, I just kind of shook his hand, and I said, thank you so much, you know, let's stay in touch, should anything change? Mm -hmm. And sure enough, within about six months, I think six months to the day, they wound up bringing me back, not only for mornings, <laughs> but then for afternoons. And then that boss and I, actually, out of everything, what was so great is that we became really good friends because he had received such um, unbelievable feedback that he was going to, you know, his head was going to explode. And I realized that rather than doing what your instinct is when something bad happens to you, um, there's an opportunity to learn something and to grow. And he and I, I was just at his wedding, and we have an incredible friendship and bond. So I think out of most things that happen at that station, that's something that I'll never you know, forget. And I owe it all to Whoopi Goldberg. So, and <laughs> yeah. I did get to meet her, and oh. she was like, please take your job back, because this is hard and I don't want it. <laughs> so. well, that's a great way to have it. Yeah. All right, we're going to be right back here on the A-List. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome back to The A-List. I'm Colin Hughes. Today with me is Melissa Foreman, host of You and Me This Morning. Uh-huh. And uh, we just uh, had an interesting conversation about uh, the Pacer test. <laughs> but <laughs> We did, Colin. I'm amused by this Pacer test because I have a, I have a 10-year-old and she comes home in a panic about this pacer test. And I'm like, what? I didn't have this pacer test when I went to school. Yeah, I, well, fitness wasn't a big deal back no, then. No, it was. Like, we had the presidential fitness, so I had to do mm -hmm. sit-ups. We had to do, like, the thing where, you, where girls had to hang. Mm -hmm. And I, I think we had to do a mile or something. But we never had to do this back and forth. But I'm glad. Are you okay? Yes, I'm good. Are I, you, what do you get? What do you have on that pacer uh, test? I, I think I think I ran like five. What? Oh, what ran, which oh, is pretty pathetic. Oh, oh it, five. I, oh, most people get like forty. And yeah. You did five. Yeah, oh well. So, you know. Well, stick to broadcasting. We'll exactly. <laughs> All right. So. And I do like your plants, by I the way. I just wanted nice to tell plants. you. I thought that they were real, and I realized no, but they're the most realistic uh, ficus they, I've ever yeah. ever seen. Ficus Very nice. Ficus is such a great word. And fern. For, fern and ficus. Yeah. That could be a name of a show, I'm Fern and Ficus. <laughs> right, it could be. Yeah. All right, so back, back to the questions that I'm supposed to ask. Okay. Um, you were, once again, like, oh, from WLIT. We were a new guy. So I made friends mm -hmm. with this, this first guy, and we were there for a while. And then it just became, it, it started to get into the time where everything is syndicated, and it was about money and everything else. Um, and so they let us go again. And um, I took that as another opportunity to be with my family. And, you know, we had great ratings, which did really well. And I just knew something else would eventually come up. So that's yeah. what happened. Yeah. And then you, something else did come up. Something did. Yeah. You know what? Um, this is a really funny story. I, I turn on the TV one morning. I'm at home. And I see this brand new show. And it says, You and Me This Morning. And I'm thinking, that's such a cute name. Like, what is this? Then I turn it on. And I see Jean Sparrow, who um, used to work at NBC5. And I knew her just kind of like our paths had crossed, but I didn't know her really well. And I thought, this is really a great show. She's so funny. I, you know, and I kept thinking like, if they put us together, this may be really good, because she came from radio. I came from radio, and I felt like if we brought both of our audiences together, it would be a home run. Ironically, Colin, that day, I kid you not, that day I got a phone call <laughs> from the U, because Jean needed to be out for a month for a medical reason, and they asked me to fill in for her. And I was like, I, I mean, I just saw it this morning. I mean, it was so crazy. So I filled in for a month. Mm -hmm. Jean came, and I had a blast. And uh, Jean came back. We wound up doing lunch. And at that lunch, I, we were both like, why don't we, you know? And so we did slowly kind of uh, put our forces together mm -hmm. and developed the show. And now we're here at 6 to 8 a.m., Monday through Friday. But it was little tiny snippets when we first started. So it's really crazy how things sometimes work out. Yeah. So you're still doing that now. Yeah. But jumping back to the beginning when uh, 
Jean Sparrow was on medical leave, and you, what was the show like then? So back then it was like, it, you know, at WCIU, the cool thing is it's the last um, locally owned and operated television station in the entire country. It's an amazing family who owns it. I adore working there. And they hadn't really done local programming like this before, especially mm -hmm. in the mornings. So they were doing these little tiny snippets in between their comedies in the morning. So it was Gene just doing like seven minutes of news and saying hi, you know, in this kitchen setting. And then it developed f from seven minutes to 15 minute little snippets. Then those 15 minutes became 30 minutes. Then we had three half hours and Gene did the first two alone and, and then she and I did the last one alone. And then it just kind of developed, you know, into this two hour show. So it's been an evolution, but I think that's, the best way to do something because it's we've been able to be really successful that way and to grow it and to work on our chemistry and everything that you know goes into doing a show together so yeah. but it started out these little tiny like you know snippets yeah so have you you have guests on the show right yeah yeah have you who's been your favorite oh my god oh my god we have had like every we've had llamas and emus and we've <laughs> um uh, you know, uh, we've had so many different people. Joe Coy, the comedian, just like licked frosting off my foot the other day. It was a little <laughs> creepy, but I kind of liked it. <laughs> He's really funny. Um, you know what? There's one guest that really stands out to me, and it's a little odd, but it's um, Latoya Jackson, of all people, Michael Jackson's sister. Because, first of all, I thought of her completely different until I met her. And when I, she sat down on the couch, I loved her and adored her. But the idea that I was sitting next to the most iconic guy in the world sitting next to his sister who holds all of his secrets, you know? Yeah. And like the idea, it would, you know what I mean? Like this is Michael Jackson's sister. And she was very forward and forthcoming on all of the stories and everything. And I just, I didn't want the interview to end and I wanted her to stay. And I wanted to know everything about Michael Jackson. And I just, for some reason that interview sticks in my mind. Very Loved cool. Loved it, yeah. And like lo looking forward, how long are you hoping to continue this you uh, and me this morning or we hope to do it a long time you know what Jean and I both love it it's it's been a process it takes a long time to get you know it has taken a long time to get to where we are mm -hmm. I love Chicago I'm a Chicago girl I have four kids people say do you want to move to New York do you want to do this well I mean if they called I would probably entertain it but <laughs> it's about Chicago to me so yeah. I, lo I love exactly where I am and if this can continue for a really long time and keep growing then I'll be like the happiest, you know, in the world. Yeah, speaking with Chicago, you have a Made in Chicago segment uh -huh. on the show. Yeah. And what do you do there? So we do Made in Chicago is really cool because this is an opportunity. If there's a lot of businesses that, you know, it could be a local restaurant, it could be somebody who makes handbags or builds, you know, I don't know, Legos, you know, houses, whatever it is, we'll do a segment and we feature them and their business. It's just a lot of fun and it's a cool way to, you know, focus on, Chicago and yeah, Chicago very Chicago locale based. yeah so uh, do you have anything else that like looking forward that you really want to try at some point or I don't know that's a really good question wait something came up the other day that I really wanted to do do you mean on the air or do you mean like with uh, a career in general you know just um I don't know I don't know I have to think about it I think it's you know this career I always tell kids when they're going into this it's been the best thing ever it's changed radio and TV is definitely different especially radio but um, it's afforded me the opportunity to do some amazing amazing things I wouldn't I wouldn't change a thing you know last question okay if you were to give somebody advice on you know high school kid going into college mm -hmm. what would you say if they were to tell you I want to go into broadcasting right okay I would say go for it don't ever give up. There's going to be a lot of people who tell you you can't do it. There's going to be a lot of people saying, oh, it's really crowded. It's a really volatile field. You have horrible hours. And I would say um, respectfully take that advice and then absolutely go for it. Don't let anybody tell you anything because I, I wouldn't want you later in life to look back and say, I should have or I could have done this and then be something that, you know, you don't want to be. All right. Well, thank you for coming thank out. Thank you, Colin. Nice to meet you. Me I too. had a blast. I know. Me too. Bye. All right. I'm Colin Hughes. This has been Melissa Foreman on The A-List. Have a good one.